Hey guys, this is Stu. We're here with Don Gerhardt at yes. Forsyth Tech Community College, and you're not going to believe what Don has actually done in his career concerning Pontiac. Don, tell us. Okay, I'll just give you a brief overview. In 1965, I got a bachelor's of mechanical engineering from Purdue University. I like vehicles and I wanted to work in the auto industry. But there was a big demand for engineers. I got over 30 job offers from around the U.S. I narrowed it down to two. One at Ford Motor Company and one at General Motors. When I interviewed Ford, there was a manager who was in charge in door locks. I did not want to work for door locks. So Ford <laughs> did not count. When I went to Pontiac, I went over to General Motors, GM told me they had a job at Pontiac for John DeLorean. And I said, you know, that sounds pretty good. Uh, I'll interview. So I went up and interviewed at Pontiac and it was successful. And I show up for work and you won't believe what my job was. <laughs> my job was to break the GTO <laughs> and work with the design engineers to fix it. And my goal was to test GTOs on a drag strip cycle at the General Motors Proving Grounds in Milford. I was given three GTOs, two brand new uh, 1965 GTOs, that's when I graduated. And we had a, a yellow one called the Yellow Weed. <laughs> that was a 1964. So these were my test vehicles. And what I would do Every morning, I would have the technicians take the cars down to the long straightaway. It was over a mile long with high back turns so I could get three drag strip cycles in from zero up to 110 or so mile an hour. And then there was a high bank at both ends. I could do the high bank and come back and do it this way. So all I was doing is running drag strip cycles. And trying to break it. Yes, well, I did break them. <laughs> and so I ran them until they, something broke. And then I'd have the wreckers take the three cars up to the Pontiac garage at the Milton Programs. They'd put it on the lift, find out what went wrong. You know, it may be a crack frame. It could be a, well, you'd know it if a dry shaft went because it would flop around in the car and I'd look out the mirror and see my dry shaft back there. <laughs> but bushings would fail. Uh, axles, I would break axles. And then I'd work with the design engineers uh, to make sure the vehicle could go 100 cycles on the drag strip. And so I worked with each, like Mikella, Cams, all, all the famous engineers at Pontiac. And uh, what they would do, they would come up with, they call them fixes. There'd be three different cost levels. One, an easy one, one a medium, and one would be an expensive one. But we would make the parts, the prototype parts, so I had the parts at the proving grounds. So I'd write, write the job up, work orders, and then the mechanics would <laughs> replace the parts. The next morning, they had my three cars. So you could again. break them again? So I could break them again. But there's, there's one story I gotta tell you. Sure. So. You know, I was working with the union, uh, but the union people at Pontiac, they were pretty good. Uh, <laughs> one time I broke, I cracked a frame, which means you gotta take the whole body off. You gotta take the frame. You had to get a new frame from the factory in Pontiac, which was 30 miles away, put the body back on the frame and once the mechanics headed up on the left and saw the crack in the frame, they said, oh, you, you won't have this car for three days. <laughs> and I said, I know, because you guys are not good enough to put a new frame <laughs> in this car overnight and have it ready for me at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And they looked and I said, what? That's unheard of, putting a frame in there. But I knew they could do it. Yeah. And they said, we'll prove you wrong. I was a young engineer. They, the mechanics like crewing Oh, uh, yeah. And so I said, okay, we'll get you a frame. Call in, we'll get a frame off the factory, 
assembly line. We'll get it shipped in here, but you guys got to take this body off, take all the parts off, the transmission, the wheels, everything. Take that old frame out. You got to start with that frame and you got to build that car. They put about, I don't know, six mechanics on it. The next morning I went in, I had a new frame on my GTO. <laughs> ready to break again. <laughs> ready to break again. But that I got awesome. many, many stories like, like one time we were having a press, uh, show morning with the press, and there was a Grand Prix, it was at the Proving Grounds, we had all these publishers there, and uh, there was a black two-door Grand Prix, there was a soup coat hanging in it, but someone said, hey, you gotta take this press agent down you know, to the track and just show them around. So I needed a car, so I saw this car, so I just took it. It happened to be uh, the Orient's personal car. Wow. <laughs> and so, well, it was owned by Pontiac. Right. That was his car. He that was, was his car. Yeah, <laughs> and that was his car, that was Bill Ford and everything. So I heard about it when I got back. That is cool. But that I got many, cool. many of these stories. So I understand that we're going to do a podcast with you yeah. sometime in the next couple months. Yes, absolutely. So you'll be hearing more of these stories. Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, can you believe that? The man was paid to abuse Pontiacs and then come up with a fix for them. How awesome. You can't get a better job. There's not a better job on the planet than what this man right here got paid to do. So stay tuned, Mechanicsville. You're gonna hear more from this guy about the abuses that he put Pontiac through. So stay tuned and we'll catch you guys later. Thanks, Don. Okay, thank you.